what's going on guys? So over the years, I've reviewed a few arterial synthesizers and typically I do so in a more Halloween themed fashion. My first experience with an arterial synthesizer came with the original Mini Brute. And well, that was not the most reassuring experience for reasons I talked about in another video, but these days Arturia is a much more established hardware synth company. Now they have nine hardware pieces that cover a lot of sonic ground. And yes, nine, I'm counting the origin. So yeah, that was actually their first original hardware synthesizer. And it was a digital powerhouse, very underrated at the time. Anyways, the new look Arturia began with the Mini Brute in 2012. And since then they've made the Micro Freak, Micro Brute, Mini Freak, Mini Brute 2, Mini Brute 2S, Matrix Brute, and the Polybrute. Before the video starts, comment what your favorite Arturia synthesizer is if you have one, especially if you own an Origin. I mean, I'd like to know. So starting with the biggest, and some may say the best synthesizer Arturia has ever made, it's the Polybrute. And now, the Polybrute is a bit strange to me. It's by far the heaviest analog synthesizer I have ever owned, making it not my first choice for any sort of real world gigging, it's got a ton of expression possibilities, but as far as the practical keyboard is, I think it's too large and bulky for the polyphony given. And for my taste, the left-hand side of the panel is a bit busy with all the text and knobs. That said, what makes it a bit awkward for me as a performer is what makes it amazing for a sound designer. Think it's got this amazing ability to be expressive and the presets really show off how versatile the Polybrew can be. Some of the presets will make you question why other analog synths can't do what it can do. Under the hood, it's got a two pole 12 dB per octave Steiner Parker filter and a Moog inspired four pole 24 dB per octave ladder filter. And that makes this very special. The ability to continuously sweep the slope on that Steiner Parker filter is unique. Tons of modulation capabilities. I'm honestly some of the best effects I've heard on a hardware synthesizer. And I think that's probably because a lot of the algorithms are from their critically acclaimed FX collection. The Morphe expression controller on the left and ribbing controller above the keybed gives a very different way to interact with your synth. I actually think the Polybrute is best as a sound design piece and that's how I'd use it. It's fun and friendly enough for beginners, but full featured enough and unique enough for pros. A misstep here in my opinion, and this is a common theme, there is no audio input on the Polybrute and it is a real shame. With the plethora of filtering and effects options, uh, I really hope next time with that Arturia. All right, so next the drum brute impact. And to me, this is the most fun you can have on a very affordable all analog drum machine, but I have to get the one con out of the way first. There is no global filter on the drum brute impact and that might kill it for you. And if that's the case, you gotta get the OG drum brute. The impact, while well, it's got the sounds that you're looking for, the beat repeat is sweet, very fun for jamming with yourself. The color button changes up your sound, song modes for chaining patterns, polyrhythm capabilities, as each drum track can be separate length. Swing can be global or per instrument. Random knob makes randomized pattern generation. Distortion circuit, I mean, it's just, it all flows. You can learn most of what the impact does in one session. While it does offer a deeper diveable functionality with a small bit of effort. So the drum brute impact is for the beginner who wants an all analog drum machine with all the tight sounds you've been looking for and zero fluff. There is nothing confusing here. It also has really cool things like polyrhythm capability, random pattern generation. It's got individual outputs on the rear. It's really something, you know, for the price. If you're looking for all the things that are missing here, the full drum brute is for you. It's the same ease of use, basically the same layout, but with actual not grouped individual outputs and an actual Steiner Parker filter. You'll need to spend a little extra coin, uh, but to me, there is a chance, I've seen it, that you can find an OG drum brute for under $200 used. And I think that most people, including me, would never need another better analog drum machine. And I'm serious about that. The Micro Freak, well, it became one of the most surprising instruments Arteria has ever made, being followed up by the larger, more my style Mini Freak. And well, because it has keys, but that said, the Arturia Micro Freak is a four voice monophonic or paraphonic hybrid synthesizer. It is dubbed an algorithmic synthesizer. 
Hybrid equals 16 types of digital oscillators and a 12 dB per octave analog state variable resonant filter with low pass, high pass, and band pass. So many of the oscillators within the Microfreak have been sourced from the Platts module by, you know, mutable instruments, and they're integrated seamlessly here. While initially I was not a fan of the Microfreak's uh, keybed or lack thereof, it's got this capacitive polyphonic aftertouch keyboard and this capacitive touch strip. It's like a ribbon controller. There's a freaking vocoder in here as well. So the only cons I have is maybe the sound might not be what you're looking for. I don't consider it to be the same category of harsh as say a Waldorf, but if you're into a little colder of a sound, the Microfreak is totally for you. I also don't love the use of endless encoders, but that's personal, I guess. I said it before, at the end of the day, I think the Microfreak, in my opinion, is by far the best, not just digital, not just analog or virtual or otherwise. I think it is the best synthesizer for roughly $300 released in the last 10 years. If you want keys, like you could just get a mini freak. It's essentially the same thing, but with 22 oscillator modes, six voice polyphonic instead of paraphonic, stereo outputs, and an overall more fully fledged digital keyboard experience. And quickly, this video was made possible by Zounds. And yes, Zounds let your boy borrow a couple of the Arturias you've seen here. And thanks to them, I don't have to be drowning in bills like I used to. I want to say that I've been personally using the plate as you pay for years. So you just pick a payment option that suits you and pay for your gear over time while playing with your gear now. It's easy and you won't get into trouble with crazy, stupid interest rates. But anyways, I can't be buying $3,000 since just for videos and y'all know that. So check out Zounds.com and a big thanks to Zounds for letting me borrow some Arturias. And lastly, the Mini Brute 2, which is the descendant of the Micro and Mini Brute, sibling to the Mini Brute 2S and child of the extremely powerful Matrix Brute. So the Mini Brute 2 is a mono synth with two oscillators and a 12 dB per octave Steiner Parker filter with low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch modes. There is a great 48 point CV and gate patch boy, making it a awesome modular patching intro to modular patching thing. It's got the same great experimental oscillator choices you've been used to, such as ultrasaw, square, pulse, with triangle, metalizer, all that stuff. You're probably asking, what's the difference between the Mini Brute 2 and the Mini Brute 2S? Well, it all comes down to the sequencer. If you are okay with eight steps and you'd rather have a keyboard, you get the Mini Brute. If you want more encoders and want 64 steps and 64 patterns, the 2S is for you. So I still think the Micro Brute is the best analog synthesizer for beginners. It's got no presets. It pushes you to learn and no typical effects. Helps train your ear as far as making good sounding patches that don't rely on drowning in reverb and delay. Now, if you felt like you ever wanted to take the Mini Brute to the max, though, well, that's when you get the Matrix Brute and the Matrix Brute is an all analog signal path featuring all of the experimental oscillators and linear oscillators, 12 and 24 dB Steiner Parker and 12 and 24 dB ladder filters, both designs offering low pass, band pass, and high pass. Lastly, you're getting five all analog effects. You can have mono and stereo delay, chorus, flanger, and a multi-tap reverberator. So do not overlook the Matrix Brute. I loved its sound and its focus on the purest analog character available. I think in time, it will be seen as a very unique piece, even though it's technically a huge monosynth. Anyways, those are my thoughts and a strange review of all the Arteria synthesizers in one video. I hope this helps somebody. I know the channel has sort of moved on from reviews, but yeah, I always have fun and try to come back to this kind of thing every once in a while. So remember to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.